Uh-oh, here comes the magic school bus. That means that Ms. Frizzle is about to take us on another weird trip. You have no idea what she makes us go through, but you're about to find out. Thanks to Joanna Cole, who wrote all about us in the magic school bus and the electric field trip, and Bruce Deegan, who drew the pictures. If you want to come along, climb on board and bring your book. Not all the words in the book are on this tape, but you can still follow along. Just turn the page when you hear this sound. It looked like rain on the day Ms. Frizzle decided to teach our class about electricity. She gave us books, she showed us videos, and she helped us do experiments. As usual, the Frizz was excited about science. Class, electricity is one of the strongest forces in our lives. Miss Frizzle is the strongest force in my life. Electricity can do work. Bye, Keisha. It can make things. Flow with light. Heat up. Move. Every once in a while, Miss Frizzle looked out the window and murmured to herself. She should be here any minute. Who should be here, we wondered, as we made a list of everything in our classroom that uses electricity. These use electricity. Lights, computer, bell, fan, clock, tape player, TV, VCR. There's no one like Miss Frizzle. She's definitely one of a kind. So is her dress. Mr. Lightbulb gave us some advice. Be smart. Be safe. Electricity is useful, but it can be dangerous, too. It can hurt you or even kill you. Be careful around electricity. Just then, a red-haired girl cartwheeled into the room. Hello, Aunt Valerie, said the girl kissing Miss Frizzle on the cheek. My niece, Dottie Frizzle, is visiting today, said the Frizz. Dottie, we're learning about electricity. Dottie seemed excited about science, just like the Frizz. Ooh, I just love electricity. First, we have to learn about atoms. Ooh, I just love atoms. Everything is made of atoms, by Arnold. The air you are breathing, the book you are reading, the floor under your feet, even your own body, all of these are made of atoms. Atoms are very, 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 very small by Wanda. It would take more than a million atoms to stretch across the width of just one human hair. Miss Frizzle took out a pointer and said, Class, to understand electricity, we must understand atoms. Here is a giant model of an atom. She pointed to the outer part of the atom model. These tiny parts of the atom are called electrons, she said. Electrons circle around the nucleus, or center, of the atom. Ooh, I love electrons. Two frizzles, it just isn't fair. <coughs> Most of the time, Electrons stay with their own atom, continued the Frizz. But sometimes electrons get pulled away. They leave one atom and jump to the next. They make a stream that runs from atom to atom. This stream is called electric current. Electric current runs from the wall outlet through the plug, through the wire, and into the fan's motor. And that's what makes it work. Traveling electrons are electricity by Michael. When we travel, you get power. A word from Dorothy Ann. Current comes from a word that means to run. Electrons run through the wire. Outside, the sky got darker and darker by the minute, and big raindrops started plopping down. Ms. Frizzle picked up a roll of electrical wire. I am peeling off some of the plastic insulation to show you the copper wire inside, she said. The metal wire makes a path for the electrons. The plastic covering keeps them in the wire and away from us. 
Wow, it's a super highway for electrons. Some materials are good paths by Carlos. Current runs through some materials easily. Why? Because their electrons are loosely bound. They travel easily from atom to atom. Some good paths are metals, acids, water. Other materials are good blockers. In some other materials, the electrons are tightly bound. It's hard for them to run. Good blockers make good insulators. Some good blockers are plastic, rubber, wood, glass, air. Chrissy said that one way to make electric current is to move a magnet near a wire. We made a tiny power plant in our classroom. We were making electric current. Our mini power plant can move one little needle, but the city power plant sends enough electricity for our whole town. You mean just moving a magnet near a wire makes electrons travel? Yes, Ralphie, but we must have an unbroken circuit, circle, of wire. If the circuit is broken, the needle won't move. Making a mini power plant by Ralphie. What we use, six feet of thin copper wire, bar magnet, meter to measure current. What we do, wrap wire into coil, 400 turns. Attach wire ends to meter. Move magnet inside coil. What happens? The meter needle moves. Why it happens? Moving the magnet makes current flow in the wire. Current makes the needle move. Electricity has a special relationship with magnetism. Magnetism can make electricity. Uh... Just then, lightning flashed and thunder cracked outside. The lights in our room flickered and went out. All the appliances stopped running. There's no electricity. Someone yelped. We're experiencing a blackout, said the Frizz. Let's find out what happened. Lights out by Gregory. A blackout happens when electric current stops flowing from the power plant to the community. We're not going to stay here in the dark, are we? To the bus, everyone! Ooh, I love buses! <laughs> Soon we were riding on the old school bus, trying to find out what had caused the blackout. It wasn't long before we saw the problem. The lightning had hit a tree and knocked it down. The falling tree had broken a power line. Sparks were flying everywhere. What is lightning? It is electricity by BB. When a storm happens, extra electrons stick to tiny drops of water or ice. When enough of them gather together in one place, they jump. This is a bolt of lightning. Lightning safety rules. During a lightning storm, do not stay outdoors. Go into a house, car, or bus. Do not use the telephone. Do not use electric appliances. Do not go near water. Electrons can't run to our school because the pathway is broken. Where are those electrons when you need them? Help! Let's get out of here! We yelled. The Frizz didn't waste a minute. She made a U-turn and drove away. It's smart to be afraid of a downed power line, children. I must be extra smart. Be smart. Be safe. Stay away from a downed power line. It could kill you. We looked back and saw electrical workers arriving. They were going to fix the problem. When we open these breakers, we cut off power to the down line. Now we can repair the line without getting hurt. Let's get this tree out of the way. 
how we fix a broken line. After we are sure all the breakers are open, we can begin work. Then we pull the broken ends together. Next, we splice the wires together. The splicer is like the finger toy. The more you pull outward, the tighter it holds the fingers. We put the line back up. Close the breakers again. We're done. On to the next job. Up ahead was the town's power plant. It looked like a little city of buildings. Inside those buildings is the equipment that makes electricity, class. Ms. Frizzle told us. Ooh, let's visit the power plant now, suggested Ms. Frizzle's niece. What a wonderful idea, Dottie, crowed the Frizz. Hang on, everyone. When I grow up, I want to be just like my Aunt Val. Don't worry, you already are. <coughs> power plants are hot stuff, by John. Most power plants use heat to make electricity. They burn fuels such as coal, oil, or natural gas. The good news, fuel-burning plants can make huge amounts of power. The bad news, they all make air pollution. Some plants get heat from nuclear reactors. The good news, these make huge amounts of power without air pollution. The bad news, they create nuclear wastes. When we arrived at the plant, Ms. Frizzle gave us heat-proof suits and said, We'll begin our tour by observing the fuel supply. She pushed a little button on the dashboard, and the bus changed into a dump truck. Making a delivery! Ms. Frizzle yelled. Children, fuel is anything we burn to make energy. At my old school, we never got burned up to make energy. The dump truck tipped up, and we went tumbling down the coal chute. We landed in the coal bin and slid right into a furnace of flames. Let's see what all this heat is used for, said Ms. Frizzle. What a big barbecue. Did anyone bring hot dogs? Cleaner ways to make electricity by Molly. Some plants can make electricity without fuel. Solar generators use the sun's energy. Geothermal plants use heat from inside the earth. Hydroelectric plants use the energy of falling water. Windmills use wind energy. Tidal plants use the energy of ocean tides. The bad news. Right now we can't get all the power we need from these sources. The good news. People can invent better ways to use non-polluting sources. <coughs> Overhead, there was a metal pipe with water in it. The fire was making the water boil, and the boiling water was turning into steam. Hold hands, everyone! yelled the Frizz. She jumped up to the pipe, pulling us along. What is steam? by Michael. Steam is an invisible gas made of water molecules, the tiniest bits of water. In a second, our whole class was inside the steam pipe. The steam was traveling at high speed, and we were too. Now we'll learn what all this steam is used for, class, called Ms. Frizzle. Steam Can Do Work by Shirley. When steam is heated in a closed container, it pushes out. We can use this pressure to do jobs for us. The steam in this pot has push power. It's pushing up the lid. We steamed along through the pipe and into the next room in the power plant. Woohoo! Full steam ahead! This steam is under high pressure, class. I've never been comfortable in high-pressure situations. <coughs> there was only one thing in the room, an enormous machine called a turbine. It had blades like a fan, and when the steam pushed on the blades, the turbine spun around. 
turbine comes from a word that means swirl or spin. The turbine made a metal shaft spin too. We spun around the shaft and slid along to the next part of the power plant. Let's go look at what all this spinning is used for, said the frizz cheerfully. We were too dizzy to reply. The steam turns the turbine. And the turbine turns the shaft. It's turning my stomach too. The shaft led us to the generator, the part of the plant that actually makes electricity. This generator was really big, but it worked just like the little one we had made in school. On the outside were coils of wire. On the inside was a magnet. The shaft turned the magnet, and the moving magnet made electric current run in the wire. Marvelous Magnetism by Phil. Almost all power plants use magnets. Without magnetism, we could not make large amounts of electricity. The power plant turns the magnet with steam power. In our mini power plant, we move the magnet with arm power. Then the current flowed into a power line, or large wire, leading out of the plant. Next, we'll observe what all this electricity is used for, said the frizz. Suddenly we began to get smaller and smaller and smaller, until we could fit inside the power line. Class, we are leaving the power plant by high voltage wire. Ooh, I love high voltage! I've always thought of myself as a low voltage kind of person. What are volts? By Rachel. Volts measure the push of electric current. The higher the voltage, the more pressure there is to push the current through the wire. We got even smaller. Now we could fit between the spaces in the wire. Electrons were jumping all around us, making current. We followed the frizz from the power plant through the lines toward our town, dodging electrons as we went. Look at all the electrons in here. And look how fast they're moving. Ooh, I love fast. Not this fast. Does each electron run the whole way from the power plant to your house? By Amanda Jane. No, it jumps only to the next atom. The process is a little like having a tube filled with a row of balls. If you put another ball in one end of the tube, each ball moves forward only one place. But the current flows all along the tube. On the way, we pass through transformers, devices that made the voltage in the wire higher or lower. Higher voltage helps the current travel the long distance from the plant to the places that will use the electricity. Lower voltages are used in factories and big businesses. Still lower voltages are used in small buildings and homes. Where are we going? Someone asked. We're on our way to a light bulb. The frizz answered calmly. Why is Miss Frizzle taking us to a light bulb? Because she doesn't want to go to a heavy bulb. Get it? Do electrons run only one way in the power line? By Arnold. No. The electric current in the power line changes direction many times every second. This is called alternating current, or AC for short. A word from Dorothy Ann. Transform means to change. A transformer changes the voltage from high to low, or from low to high. We were moving down the power line when Ms. Frizzle said, Here we are at the town library. We followed her through the wires and into a lamp. We're going right into the light bulb, Wanda cried. Inside the bulb, we squeeze into a very, very, very thin wire, the filament. The filament makes the bulb light up, said Miss Frizzle. A word from Dorothy Ann. Filament comes from a word that means thread. The first filaments were made of burnt cotton thread or even bamboo. Today's filaments are made of a strong metal called tungsten. 
Be smart. Be safe. Don't put your fingers, your tail, or anything else in an electric outlet. Hey, there's my mom. She's checking out books for me. Ooh, this tiny filament makes a big light. Eek! Mr. Quiggin, your lamp just spoke to me. Don't worry. It's just making light conversation. Billions and billions of electrons were pushing through the thin filament all at once. That made the filament get white hot. When something is white hot, it glows with light. We scarcely had time to put on our sunglasses before we were in and out of the bowl. Then we were heading away from the library. We didn't even have a chance to check out any books. <coughs> We traveled down the street through the power line until we came to Joe's Diner. Once inside the restaurant, we entered a toaster. Now we'll observe how electricity makes heat, said the frizz. Follow me into the heating element. The heating element was a coil made of a special kind of wire. When electricity flowed through the wire, it got red hot. A heating element is like the filament in a light bulb. It makes heat and light. But it makes more heat than light. Phew, it's warm today. You think you're warm, you should be in the kitchen. You think you're warm, you should be in the toaster. The heating element was making some toast. That reminded us, wasn't it almost lunchtime? One tuna sandwich on toast, please. Mmm, make that two. Too late, we're gone. Not even fast food is fast enough for us. Miss Frizzle didn't stop. Maybe she wasn't hungry. She went out the wire to the main power line again. We will now visit someone's house, she said, making a sharp turn. I wonder whose house, murmured Phoebe. <coughs> it was Phoebe's house. Her grandma was using a power saw to make a bookcase for Phoebe's room. I hope Phoebe likes this. Oh, good, said Ms. Frizzle. This gives us a chance to see how the saw is driven by an electric motor. Ms. Frizzle said an electric motor has magnets inside. How magnetic poles behave by Wanda. Every magnet has two poles. North and South. Poles that are the same push each other apart. Poles that are different pull each other together. Welcome home, Phoebe. At my old school, I never came home in the middle of the day. Remember how we made electric current with a magnet? Asked Frizzy. Well, it works the other way, too. Electric current can turn a piece of metal into a magnet. This kind of magnet is called an electromagnet. Electromagnets are what make the motor run. How to make an electromagnet by Tim. A coil of wire is wrapped around a piece of iron or steel. When current flows through the wire, the metal acts like a magnet. When current flows, the magnet attracts paper clips. When current is not flowing, paper clips are not attracted. When the current stops, the magnetism stops too. Motors need magnets. Ooh, I find magnets so attractive. Maybe if you're a paper clip. <coughs> for a tour of the electric motor, called Ms. Frizzle. We ran through the wire and into the motor. Everything was whirring and shaking in there. Motor comes from a word that means to move. This is a very moving experience. A cylinder called a rotor was turning very fast. The rotor was attached to a shaft, and the shaft was attached to the saw blade. The spinning rotor made the blade turn so it could cut wood. If an electric appliance has moving parts, it probably has a motor. How a motor works. Inside a motor, 
Electromagnets make a moving part spin. One, an electromagnet is attached to a part of the motor that does not move, the stator. Two, another magnet is attached to a part that turns, a rotor. Three, the stator magnet's north pole pulls on the rotor magnet's south pole. This makes the rotor turn. Four, then the alternating current in the wire coil changes direction. This makes the poles of the stator magnet switch places. Five, now the electromagnet south pole is next to the rotor magnet south pole. These poles are the same so they push each other away. This makes the rotor turn away from the electromagnet's south pole. Six, the current keeps alternating, so the rotor keeps turning. These diagrams are too hard for me. I'm gonna study them later. Ah, uh, much later. While we were in the motor, Phoebe's grandma kept sawing. She didn't notice the cat creeping up on the birdcage. Ah, watch out! Squawked the parrot. But it was too late. The cage fell over, scattering birdseed and other stuff all over the carpet. Phoebe's grandpa came to the rescue with the vacuum cleaner. What? Tuna Breath has done it again. I guess it's cleanup time. Come on, kids, called Miss Frizzle. We have to see this. She led us out of the power saw in one outlet, through the wires in the walls, out another outlet, and into the vacuum cleaner wire. The motor in the vacuum cleaner works just like the one in the power saw, except that instead of moving a saw blade, this motor turns a fan. I get it. The fan sucks air into the cleaner. And when the air goes in, the dirt goes with it. Well, I'm not going in. We were getting ready to leave when Grandpa finished vacuuming and turned off the switch. That made a gap in the electric pathway. No more electrons could flow past the gap, so the motor stopped running. It's time to go. Forget it. No one is going anywhere. Not even Miss Frizzle. Now that's a switch. How a switch works by Alex. Inside the appliance, the wires are connected by two metal pieces called contacts. Turning it on. When you switch to on, the switch pulls the contacts together. They make a little bridge between the wires. Then electrons can flow and the appliance works. Turning it off. When you switch to off, the switch pulls the metal pieces apart. The electrons cannot flow, and the appliance shuts down. Does a light switch work like this, too? Yes, all switches do. We called to Grandpa, but he couldn't hear us. Phoebe was worried. She had to get back in time for an after-school karate class. The rest of us were playing in a soccer game, but what could we do? We were stuck in the switch of a vacuum cleaner. Save us, Grandpa! Forget it. He's watching TV. At least it's something educational. How Your TV Works by Keisha. 1. TV signals are sent by the TV station. 2. The signals cause tiny electric currents in your antenna or cable. 3. The little currents control an electron gun in the picture tube in your TV. 4. The electron gun shoots electrons at the back of your TV screen. Five, the screen is coated with thousands of dots made of phosphor, a chemical. Six, when electrons hit the phosphor dots, the dots glow with light. Seven, the phosphor dots form shapes on the screen. Get the picture? <coughs> Suddenly, we heard loud barking. Phoebe's puppy had been digging holes in the garden. He came inside all covered with dirt. The first thing he did was to roll around on the carpet. Now, 
Wow, that's what I call a dirty dog. The carpet isn't that clean either. The vacuum is sure getting a workout today. Grandpa had to switch on the vacuum cleaner again. The switch pulled the contacts together and the electric path was complete again. Follow me back to school, kids! Yelled Ms. Frizzle. We went through the switch, out the wire to the outside power lines, down the street, and into the wires in the school's walls. I just love going on class trips. I just love returning from them. Be smart. Be safe. Never use appliances with frayed, torn, or damaged insulation. We flowed through an outlet and into the wire of a floor waxing machine. The next thing we knew, we were popping out of a hole in the wire's insulation. Hey, I'm big again. Me too. Thank goodness. As soon as we had grown to our regular size, Ms. Frizzle led us back to the classroom. You'd better repair the frayed insulation on the power cord, Mr. Johnson. You might be shocked. Really? Frayed so. <coughs> it had been some day. We'd gone through fires and wires. We had close encounters with subatomic particles, and we'd seen a new side of home appliances, the inside. Our visit to the electric power plant. The coal fire made steam that turned the turbine, that turned the shaft, that turned the magnet, that made electricity. I'll be running along now. Thanks for the chip. It was electrifying. So long, Daddy. Come again. Now everything was back to normal in our class. Well, everything except Miss Frizzle, of course. Look at her dress. Uh-oh. I sense trouble. Get real. The exciting new game that tells you what's real and what's not. Some things can happen only in our imaginations. But it did happen. In your dreams. Start. Get real. School children can't go inside the furnace, turbine, or generator at a power plant. Go back two spaces. It's true. Atoms really do have electrons. Go ahead three spaces. Get real. Kids really can't go inside electric power lines and wires. Go back four spaces. It's true. Electrons really do travel through wires to give us power. Go ahead three spaces. Get real. Kids can't run in the space between atoms. Go back four spaces. Get real! Magnetism and electricity can't really fall in love. Go back two spaces. Get real! A school bus can't really turn into a dump truck. Go back two spaces. Police! I can't believe that! It's true. Miss Frizzle really does have a niece who is a lot like her. Go directly to finish. Finish! <laughs> you win! The Frizz is an imaginary character. She is? Other things we want to learn about electricity by Ms. Frizzle's class. How do batteries store electricity? By Wanda. What safe experiments can we do with batteries? By Arnold. How do solar generators work? By Tim. What is static electricity? By Carlos. How do fluorescent lights work? By Dorothy Ann. Is there electricity in my brain? By Phoebe. How do computers work? By Ralphie. 
What do these electricity terms mean? Watt, amp, ohm, AC, DC. Why does water make electricity extra dangerous? By Keisha. Why should you never, never fly kites near a power line? By Rachel.